warm air pattern sets up across Texas and we see a low cloud spreading north. Does anybody know what that's called? Let's take a quick look at that. Let you take a guess about that. We haven't really done any uh, cloud identification uh, quizzes. That might be a good idea. But you can see it's a fairly low cloud and there's uh, shading beneath it. They look uh, very thick. The uh, text outlined indicated the cloud height was about 1,400 feet. We can take a look at this Cloud Atlas site, and I recommend uh, definitely going here. They've got a really cool atlas, and this atlas used to cost about $200 to order, but now it's free. It's a PDF, and you can grab that. It's at this uh, link right here. And let me show you the relevant section of that. Uh, Unfortunately, the uh, picture here is not so great, but this is pretty much it right here. And we look at the text and we can see that's Stratocumulus, Stratiformis, Translucidus. Cloud, uh, low cloud type 5, and they give you a little description right here. And then related Stratocumulus clouds would look like this. And uh, like that. So that's what we have out there. And that can help you out a little bit when you're looking at the sky and you can kind of tie that into the surface chart and the isentropic charts. Here's a pattern we have across Texas uh, this evening. Let's take a quick look at that. I'm going to take a look at chat here and make sure no problems on the audio. Looks good. Very good. Yeah, Jeff says, got the uh, stratocumulus part right. Good. Yeah, the Atlas site's image is kind of fuzzy. Yeah, looks that way to me, too. We can see that the uh, main thickness banding is uh, well to the south, pretty much over old Mexico and across Texas. So Colorado, or not Colorado, but California, Nevada, Oregon, they're in the, co the core of the polar air. So we know that the front is going to be well south of that. And we try to find that on the southern edge of the uh, thickness banding, and that pretty much puts the front somewhat like that. So we're going to be looking for that front to be in Mexico with uh, a cold air mass as you go further and further north. However, we can see this kind of connects back up to a new warm front over the Pacific, set up something like that and that's taking aim on California for the next couple days so we've got the storm tracks going over California one after the other and that's keeping things uh, quite busy here 500 millibar chart looking like this let's get back there there we go 500 millibar chart looking like that you can see the Pacific wide open very strong uh, jet flow coming onto the California coast, and we've got 65 knots there at San Diego. And that continues into Texas as a southern stream. We do have a little bit of uh, jet energy way up to the north that's associated with the main polar front up in Canada. And you can see this upper level low, which is tied in with the cold air over the central plains that is Moving on out, and on the back side, we're pulling in the warm air advection from the Gulf. So we have another trough coming in, and this is kind of a negative tilt trough here. It's kind of oriented uh, in the southeast-northwest pattern. And that's going to be heading towards Texas, and we'll check that out on the GFS chart here. Temperatures across the state here in Texas lots of 70s and even 80 just south of San Antonio so temperatures are coming back up looking at uh, a little bit of a cool down not all that much really in the Phoenix area we got 57 there 56 at Vegas that's still a little bit warm so the cold air that's coming in not particularly cold but it's enough to drive that frontal system that we have down in Mexico Watches and warnings across the country have uh, winter storm advisories, winter weather advisories across much of the Great Basin area, and 
I believe these are winter storm watches for the Flagstaff and Western Colorado area and some wind advisories out to the south. So things are pretty busy in that area. And let's see, we'll take a look at soundings here. We, I decided uh, we should kind of run through a lot of soundings very quickly to get kind of a look at the air mass. We'll start with Tucson here, Tucson in southern Arizona. You can see the tropa pause is a little bit on the low side, down about 29,000 feet. So this is indicative of a cold air mass over the region. And we see that the temperature started about 58, 57 near the ground, and fairly a decent lapse rate here, so lots of cold air aloft. And if we have gusty winds, we can transport some of that cold air down to the surface if the lapse rates are steep enough. Flagstaff, uh, let me see if this is current just a minute. I like the uh, color soundings that UCAR has, but they do tend to come in kind of late. Flagstaff zero, okay, yeah, let's uh, look at UCAR. Flagstaff showing uh, pretty steep lapse rates and very low tropopause, so this is certainly part of the cold air mass. Desert Rock in uh, southern Nevada, also low tropopause, and a little bit of uh, humidity here in the lower layers. Let's see, we got a f sounding at Edwards, actually, but that's for this morning. I might skip that there. Got a sounding for the San Diego area. So very steep lapse rates in the lower part of the atmosphere. That's conducive towards uh, some very tall low cloud patterns. And we got a bit of an inversion just above that, up about 10 or 15,000 feet. Low tropopause, and as you can see, two layers of steep lapse rates. Looks like a little bit of uh, cirrus up at about 20,000 feet there. Similar picture at Oakland, but you can see it's quite a bit cooler. We go from temperatures in the low to mid-50s, very steep lapse rates near the surface, and fairly steep above that. We get down to minus 10 at 700 millibars there. And I guess we'll take a look at one more. I'm aware, I'm aware if we go through about 20 or 30 of those, then I'm probably going to have viewers fall asleep here. But there's Oakland... Uh, Not sure if I just showed that, to tell you the truth. In Medford there, very strong lapse rates once again. Going from uh, upper 40s, almost dry adiabatic in the lower part of the atmosphere, and some pretty decent moisture there. So if we can construct some parcels here and squeak out some convective clouds pretty easily. So that's how we get uh, cold core advection within the core of the cold air. So I guess that's probably about all the soundings I want to do there. We do have some weather going on in Florida. So maybe I should take a look at uh, some soundings out there, to tell you the truth. Those will be kind of interesting. Let me get back to where that... Uh, let me see where I was. There we go. going to pull out the Tallahassee sounding. And we can see if we lift a parcel in there, maybe go with a little bit warmer temperatures. 73, 74. We get a little bit of positive area in here. There is some negative area, so there's a cap just above that. And then lapse rates above that, not really too steep. So it looks like the instability in here is kind of limited. And uh, the Birmingham sounding looks uh, kind of moist, adiabatic, uh, looks a little bit Got kind of a tropical look there. And I'll pull out one more. I guess I'll go with Atlanta. Also looks like a marginal instability there. Some fairly decent moisture near the surface. 50s uh, dew points. And we do get a little bit of positive area here and there. A little bit of uh, capping. And then some warm air above that. That's what we used to call the Cape Robber here, being caused by some subsidence aloft. 
Okay, we do have some changes coming up for this weekend. Let's take a look at the 500 millibar chart, and uh, this is heights and vorticity up in the mid parts of the troposphere. So we can see a couple short waves working through this flow. Quite a few of them. This one is supporting the line of uh, showers and storms. And then we have another one coming in from the Pacific here. And then the uh, main troughs, uh, the larger scale troughs, are going to be this one and that one. So over the next couple of days, we see this jet max coming in into the uh, Southern California coast. Very strong uh, jet streak, really showing that channeling of vorticity through here. And that moves into the Texas area on Saturday. And this is the left front quadrant of that jet max. So this is where we're getting some very strong ascent of uh, air here. And this is really destabilizing the soundings also. It looks like another one coming in here on the Pacific there. This will be affecting the North California area, looks like. So a little bit of a break for Texas on Sunday and Monday, and then we get a little more action coming into Texas for Wednesday and Thursday, a little bit further north until the bottom part of that trough comes in on Thursday and Friday. And then you can see the pattern really shift here. You see up to the north we develop some very strong northerly flow. Very large, large trough there. But the northerly flow is really going to be the key to cooling things down and kicking some Canadian air southward. So we're talking about the 28th through February 1st. And this is pretty much the North Pole Express. Northerly winds going all the way up to the Arctic ice pack. So we're talking about a pretty good cold air outbreak for the Great Lakes area and the Midwest. Then we get into a very meridional pattern here. See that very strong uh, pattern here, a very strong amplitude of these ridges. In fact, this looks like probably a blocking pattern setting up along the west coast here. Then we see what looks like a, a mega block pretty much setting in right there. So this may lock us into a northerly flow in the first part of February. So we'll have to see how that works out there. Okay, time to set up the GFS forecast. Let me get this going. Okay, then we'll take a look at the chat here and see what's going on here. Tom says, uh, ready to party there. Excellent. I decided uh, too many skew tees was really going to weigh down the party, so you have to pardon me there. We may need to do a special workshop, though. That might be a great idea and really go over the soundings at that time. All right, uh, let's see here. Troy is asking, can you provide us a link for the PDF Cloud Atlas you referenced? I'll, I'll bring that up. Uh, let me go up to my tabs here, and looks like that's gone already. But you can just put in WMO Cloud Atlas. And then that'll come up with let's see if that link is in the video frame. Yeah, there it is up the top. So that's going to be it right there. Or like I said, you can use a search engine there. And uh, Kevin's right. When we're getting a couple days before an expected storm situation, we need to look at the NAM. Yeah, that's definitely a better model. Of course, I'm trying not to uh, fill up my windows with too many panels here, but yeah, that's definitely correct. So since we're looking at a system coming into Texas for Saturday, tomorrow would be a good day to load up the NEM and uh, see what's coming our way. But uh, for now, we're just going to kind of focus on the fundamentals here, and uh, this would be a good opportunity for you all to 
look at some of the other models, including the uh, UK Met. There's a website you can uh, go to. Let me bring that up. It's at uh, mediocenter.com. They've got some pretty good European models here. And you can go to UK Met, and unfortunately, they only have models out to about 72 hours. But uh, it is another model you can look at and compare with the similar frames on the GFS and NAM and uh, the Canadian model. And uh, I'm going to give you one good example for next week once we get to that. So let me just run through the charts here and then we'll see what's coming our way. Okay, so we can see a pretty good uh, cold air advection pattern across Mexico. So we're looking at the front. Uh, maybe something like that. Uh, kind of hard to say at this point. Looks like uh, it doesn't really pick up that boundary till we get the uh, upper air dynamics coming in. And I guess it's just kind of a stationary boundary until this next system comes in. So we're probably looking at something like that. Picking up that boundary right here and moving into Texas. This is going to be Saturday morning. So crossing the Rockies there Friday night to Saturday morning. And then we see the boundary really start firming up here in Mexico. And then kind of a occlusion coming up north like that. But very strong cold air advection back through here in the El Paso and Tucson area. And this is the warm air advection sector. So we're going to look for a possibility of showers in this area. The problem is this westerly flow has eroded a lot of the dry air across Texas. And by Sunday, it really takes hold there. We get uh, some very strong northerly flow and cold front all the way down into the Gulf there. But the main area of showers kind of uh, sitting right there along that occluded front. And so we're going to be looking for this area here ahead of the warm front to be a possible area for some isolated severe weather early Sunday. Alabama, Florida, and Georgia along the Gulf Coast. And then out to the west, we have another system coming in yet again. So more rain for Southern California, and of course they need it. This is uh, kind of a windfall for them. And that system will be coming through on uh, Sunday and Monday night. Very strong cold air advection here in Texas coming in. And then we'll be kind of staring down the barrel at that next front on uh, Tuesday. Fronts are going to be kind of looking like this. It looks like just kind of a warm or mild downslope day for Texas on Tuesday. And then we get the front coming through overnight and things really cool down. You see the 540 line come pretty far south. And this is where we start getting that very strong northerly flow from Canada around the 26th or 27th. See a little bit of isentropic lift developing along the warm frontal boundary or the uh, along the edge of the cold air right here. Probably an 850 millibar low out here, kind of bringing in some warm air over the cold boundary. And then you can see 540 line well to the south, and look at that. There's a blob of cold air coming in over Missouri there. And looks like uh, more on store, more. That's not even a word there. More on tap for 29th and uh, 30th here. Looks like a very well-developed de Alberta Clipper here. So there it goes coming south. Get a little bit of snow shower activity with that. And looks like uh, another boundary setting up in Alberta. And we got a 1060 millibar low coming down through Montana with a very good push of cold air here. This is on February 1st. And yeah, that's pretty significant right there. 
So if that uh, works out, this is 330 hours in the future, that would be a very intense cold air blast there. Now, why do the other models say, I'm going to back this up to the 28th at 12Z. Okay, you can see on the 28th, 12Z, we've got pretty strong cold air advection. One way we can compare the models, and I, I went over this a little bit yesterday, is uh, we can look at the Canadian or the uh, European model. Let me get my uh, tab set up. They're kind of a mess. Clear that away. Let me clear this away. Okay, and I'm going to go to that uh, Media Center site. I'm going to pull up the ECMWF. And uh, as I've mentioned, they give us very limited data. But this 850 millibar heights and temperature is actually very valuable. Because this is kind of a detailed field. So there's 28 to 12Z. And you can see the 5C line, 5 degrees Celsius line. This is kind of backed off a little bit from yesterday. We had it extending kind of into this area right here of the Great Plains. ECMWF has backed that cold air extent a little bit out. So that line is running from southern Missouri or southern Mississippi to about Texarkana to Kansas City. So how does that compare with the other models? Let me try to find the chart here. There we go. There's the GFS. There's uh, 28th at 12Z. Okay, GFS has been kind of conservative with the extent of this cold air, but that's going to be about the 5 Celsius line for that. So compared with the, G with the ECMWF, Let me try that one more time. I'm a little bit off there. Okay, there's the GFS. European model was going for something like that. So, yeah, it's fairly close. What about the Canadian model? Let's check that out. There's the Canadian model at the same time. And the 5 Celsius line is running kind of like that, all the way out to the Great Basin area. So Canadian model is going a lot more extensive with this. So it kind of makes you wonder, do you uh, go with the agreement of the GFS and the European model, or this more extensive Canadian model that has had uh, shown quite a bit of uh, good skill over the past month? Now, we don't have the UK MET model, unfortunately. That only goes out to about 72 hours. But when that starts coming within range, you can uh, use that also the very same way. This is the high-resolution rapid refresh model. I figured I'd show that to you real quick. This shows that squall line coming through the Mobile and southern Alabama area. And then through the rest of tonight, you can see the extent of that storm area diminishes. So by 12Z, 6 in the morning, pretty much gone, just a few showers offshore there. Okay, it looks like I've covered everything. Uh, it's quite a bit of content there. Let me take a look at the chat, see what's going on. Ensembles, yeah, that might be a good idea also. We can uh, compare models the same way in the medium range and uh, get an idea which one is uh, good. And uh, let's see, that's probably about all I've got here. Let me just take a quick look. Yeah, I figured I'd show you the GFS here. These are the temperatures coming in for uh, later in the month. So 27th on that morning, you can see a lot of cold air across the uh, central plains. And then by the 29th and 30th, let's see, these are going to be high temperatures on Sunday the 29th. It's showing a lot of uh, f temperatures in the 40s.
and let's see here yeah this is the frame here this is a midday on the second showing highs in the 20s across North Texas and I do find that uh, when we do get cold air outbreaks the GFS tends to underestimate the uh, severity of the cold air so that's one thing to keep in mind this can be used kind of just as a general guide to what's happening and this is showing that with the GFS forecast the second is going to be probably the coldest day but I do let's see there's one other thing I wanted to point out Yeah, this is a, see the Canadian model here showing the uh, chunk of the cold air kind of in this area here on the 28th. Canadian model has that move on off. And then it brings this colder air around the 29th and 30th coming in kind of from the Hudson Bay area. So you can see that comes south. So if that pans out, Texas is going to get some pretty cold air around the 30th and 31st. Then the GFS had kind of a similar situation, but for later. So you can see it was going very conservative with the cold air. It decides to bring in, bring in a little bit uh, here around the 30th or so. And then the 31st, you can see this very huge shot of very cold air coming in from the north. This is minus 20 at 850 millibars across this entire area on the 1st. And then you can see up to the north, looks like even more coming from the eastern Arctic area. So, looks like a very big pattern change coming up for later this month. Hope you like cold air. I, I, I'm really missing it here. We've had too many mild days. We've got the bugs coming out and it's not a lot of fun. I don't know if you've heard it, but I've got a bug light in the background. I've had some ladybugs getting into the place and uh, I'm trying to get rid of those. If we get some cold air that'll kind of shut that down in quick order. Okay, that's about all I got for today. I hope you enjoyed the webcast and uh, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow at the same time, 8 o'clock. If you have any questions or comments, leave them on the video archive page of this webcast or you can send a message to my contact page at weathergraphics.com thanks and we'll see you tomorrow night